Welcome. My name is Charlie Stevens. Thanks for joining me for another lesson. Today we're going to learn about counting as it applies to music. So counting is kind of the most important thing we can do when we're playing music. So think about what music is. It's oftentimes very broadly categorized as rhythm, melody, and harmony. And rhythm, I think, is kind of the most important piece of that puzzle. So if you look at uh, the instrument, the drums, they use rhythm, but they don't really use those other elements. Most other instruments use all three. Um, but the fact that we could have a musical instrument that doesn't even use anything other than rhythm tells me that that one really is important. You can play all the wrong notes and have really good timing and it will still sound really good. Or you can play all the wrong, the right notes and have it be with really bad timing and put them in the wrong space and it will sound bad. So. Uh, visual art, like a painting you hang on your wall, that takes place in space. Music takes place in time, okay? So very important that we understand how to perceive time when we're playing music. And the way that we do that is by counting. So I have a, a rule, the ABCs of counting, and that means always be counting. So after a while, we kind of do this on a, on a distant uh, part of our brain in the subconscious where we don't really think about it. Um, so it is possible that, that we get to that level. But I would argue that we're still counting, even though it's not in, in the forefront of our brain. Generally, music is in 4-4 four, four time. That one is so common that they call that common time. Sometimes when reading music, they'll just write a C in place of where the meter or the time signature is supposed to be, and we'll talk about what that means at another point in time. And sometimes we'll just put a C there, and that means common time, and it's so common we know that means 4-4, four, four, which means we're going to count to 4 over and over and over and over and over and over again, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's called the pulse where I'm playing. One, two, okay? Now, again, this is the most important part. As I was saying, rhythm is a very important part. The pulse defines what our rhythm is. And that is really the most important part because non-musicians will pick up on that. I don't care how flashy your playing is, if an amateur listener can't sit there and tap their foot to you, they're gonna know something's up, right? Or by the opposite side of that, maybe you're not a very flashy player, but you got really good time and that listener is going to really be able to interpret your pulse and, you know, move their body to the music you're making. That's going to be powerful. That's going to be really good. So the pulse is very important. So I like to tap my foot. I like to tap my foot to the pulse. I usually like to use my right foot because I use my right arm for my more of my rhythm playing, my strumming and my picking. So I like to kind of get my whole right side of my body going. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this is a very basic introduction to how to count for music. And it's if you can count to four, you, you already got it. The trick is to do it relentlessly over and over and over again and just get really comfortable, almost like you're, you know, floating down a river. You just got to go with that. You never get off that pulse. You stay right with it. And this will help us so much. We're going to talk about how strumming concepts apply to that, how picking concepts work to that, how we can subdivide this beat. The beat is another word we can use when I'm saying one, two, three, four. I was calling each one of those the pulse, but each one of those is also called a beat. So this is just a very general explanation of that, and we'll get into some more detail about how you can use this to count and how this relates to our strumming patterns and things like that. But if this is brand new for you, I'd like you to try to count along with your favorite song or any song that you're hearing on the radio or wherever. First, just listen to the song. See if you can identify the pulse. See if you can tap your foot along with it. And then see if you can count. See if it's in four. The odds are good that it is in four, but perhaps it's in three. There are some other different timings that we could have as well that we'll discuss when we get more into meter and time signatures. Um, but for now, just get used to counting over and over again. Okay, let's try a game together. We're going to count one, two, three, four, okay? I'll count out loud. You count with me at home. At some point, I'll stop counting, 
Okay, you can keep counting out loud and then I'll resume and you should be in the same place that I am. Okay, does that make sense? I'll stop counting and maybe I'll just decide a random beat to come back in and count. Maybe I'll say four and if you're counting at home, you should be at four too. Okay, this will be a good exercise because when we're really playing, it's oftentimes not possible to uh, count in the very forefront of our brain. Sometimes we need to delegate it to our subconscious a little bit and it kind of become, becomes very natural at that point. We sort of start to feel the rhythm at that point. But to me, the only way to get there is to really relentlessly count. So more often than not, I'm actually hearing the numbers in my head. One, two, okay? So let's try that. So I got my foot tapping here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two. One. Four. One. Two. Three. Four, one, two, four, one, three, one, three, four, two, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So here I can drop in and out but I'm, I'm never really getting confused on which beat that I'm on and which part of the measure I'm on. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that exercise and feel free to practice that at home along with your favorite recordings. Okay, well, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.